quick right now. They're going for it. The defuse is already happening. Hiko, are you kidding me? He's gonna go for it. They win the Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. Hope you're all having a great Monday or Tuesday, wherever you guys are all around the world. First off, I do want to thank you all who have been using my OP Skins affiliate code. It's free to enter down below. It's actually in the description. Thank you guys so much. That's my only mean of income now that I've actually dropped my gambling sponsor. So, hope you guys all enjoy our first show today, though. Has to do with Config calling out a Twitch live streamer. In the past few weeks, we've had so many cheaters on YouTube, on Twitch. This one on, on actual Twitch, though. Her name is Miss Q Gemini, and if you go to her channel now, I believe her channel is down as of right now as well. She was called out by Config with this tweet right here as he caught her out cheating live on on her actual Twitch stream. Now when you actually went to watch the live stream clip, which I'll play for you guys, it's a very funny clip to watch because she actually pulls up her own GUI program. You can see the words Triggerbot as well as she even loads in her own cheat Config into the game itself. And then a few minutes later when she's kicked from her match for allegedly cheating, which she was using a, an aimbot as well. On top of that, when she was kicked and she was very stunned as to why she was kicked, she goes on to actually blame her friend Claire it's actually a source of all the memes out there on the forums. This friend Clara, who apparently was using her computer earlier in the day, and she was the one who installed the cheats, even though this person, Miss Q Gemini, actually you know showed us beforehand in the actual clip itself, she was using it too. So I'll play for you guys a few short clips of that. Config called her out, and she is now, I believe, off of Twitch. Actually, her stream's been shut down at this point in time, if you guys go and try and check that out. So, unfortunately enough for her... Ah, what? I just right and I reload! What the fuck? Oh my god, I'm stupid, dude! How do I close this? Yo, Rock, I need some help because I don't know what I'm looking at right now. What the fuck is that? She was at my house earlier today. What the actual fuck? Remember, do you remember when fucking Clara got the fucking back band? I'm gonna kill this girl. I just don't understand. I, I think it must have been Cla God dang it, Clara! And also, we had a really big, important video, and thank you all so much for the likes. I think we broke 650 likes on the Swedish Shuffle video where I gave to all of you guys my inside sources as to what we believe is going to happen before the 29th of June for the Swedish Shuffle for NIP Epsilon, as well as on top of that, God sent. I also gave you guys the potential new members for Cloud9 replacing Shroud. The main comment I did read on that video, though, was people said, Jake, haven't you seen Shroud's update on the whole prank situation? He had that original clip I'll play Play for you guys right now that I want you to focus on. We're going to go over both these clips. He had a new clip come out a couple weeks after his initial retirement announcement saying it was a prank. He was trying to stir up drama and I want you guys to fully analyze this and I truly believe to about 100% certainty guys his second clip where he said it was just a prank, it was to stir up drama. It is a dead shot lie. Now let's review the first clip though and let me show you guys how serious he was when he said he was going to retire. There is no lie in this man's voice in this first clip. When do you think you'll stop competing? In my eyes, I actually am set for like 2018. Are you trolling? I don't even know if you're serious. No, I'm serious. Like I, I mean, I've, I've told pretty much everyone this. Like oh, one more, one more solid year. And then you move on to the second clip, which most likely a week or so after his teammates were probably upset by this. If he had been telling them that, he probably didn't. He probably shouldn't have gone public. And more so, his owners or the organization over management probably wanted him to try and backtrack that because as an organization, when you're seeking out other players and a team knows that you or you are in desperate need of a new player, they're probably going to charge you more. There's probably more to the fact of that just besides that fact going forward as to why he shouldn't have made that public so soon. I really think in that first clip he was being very serious as opposed to this clip where he's being very sarcastic. And there's either two options here guys either he's just very awkward with his jokes or he's a terrible liar I think it's definitely the latter guys I think this is an obvious lie and I really do think that shroud does want to retire from CSGO But here's that second clip you guys showed me and really tell me in the comment section down below Do you really think this is a serious clip? Do you regret saying you plan to retire soon? No, I love stern drama Love it. You guys just eat it up. Eat it up for breakfast <laughs> I'm retiring good joke <laughs> I'm retiring. Good joke. <laughs> And oh my goodness, you know, in this past week or so, I guess you go over the past month, we've actually found out slowly but surely how much these skin creators do make in CSGO. I know we had one streamer back in the day I talked about on CSGO News. This guy made $40,000 plus for one skin. I believe it was the AK-47 point disarray. Not too impressive of a skin, albeit, but you know, great for him for being able to capitalize on such a big gain there. He made one CSGO skin, got it featured in one case, and made $40,000 plus. So now that we know all these skin creators for these cases, especially with the Spectrum, 
Spectrum case and the Hydra case are selling record numbers. The Spectrum case, one of the most sold cases, if not the most sold case of all time, approaching that steadily. Now that we know these skin creators can make so much money, people are trying to steal skins on the actual workshop. This past weekend, we had a trending number of workshop skins. The number one skin for quite some time was this skin on screen. It was actually stolen, though, a stolen piece of artwork, and was also bot liked as well. Now, here's the actual creator of that skin, Valentina Reminara. I probably butchered that last name. And here's the person who actually posted on Steam, uh, the actual workshop. And that guy does not look like a Valentina. I'm pretty sure that's not his real name. It has ever since been flagged for infringement. So be careful. For all you skin creators out there, please be honest. Just make your own skins. You guys are already making ridiculous amounts of money. It's already hard enough to get into a case. There's no need to go and steal other skins. And it certainly won't work out for you in the long run. So yes, workshop skins are starting to be stolen just for the sake of making money. I, I guess it makes sense though. I mean, greed kind of powers all these movements. I really can't thank you guys enough. Everyone who's used my OP skins affiliate code. I'm trying to talk to OP skins to get my affiliate code to give you guys some free money on there. They've been kind of lagging on the response time, but ever since I dropped my sponsorship with my gambling site, CSGO Empire, uh, first of all, thank you to them for actually sponsoring for three and a half, four months. But ever since then, I have no real income besides YouTube revenue, which is really shot through, you know, down. It's really nothing. So thank you to everyone who's actually used my OP skins affiliate code. It's free to use. All you do is click the link in the description and sign into OP skins. It doesn't give you guys anything, but it helps me out a ton. So thank you all for that. And now on to our... <laughs> Now on to our last stories for today's episode of CSGO News. And also talking about the PGL Minor, you know, all the teams who have tried to qualify for the major qualifier so far. We do have all of our major qualifier teams that will actually start June 29th. So just three weeks time, guys. We have all of our teams qualified on screen for all of you guys right now, except for our three European teams going forward. They'll try and qualify next week. June 15th is the start date for that for our last three European teams to actually finalize that group of 16 teams in the major qualifier. For the CIS region, though, it was teams 10 Green and Vega Squadron dominating other teams out there. They really did show themselves as the best two teams coming out of the CIS region actually dominating teams like Team Spirit who had two teams in that actual minor. They had Team Spirit, the main roster, and the academy roster. They both went out and actually did not win any matches. They went out in the bottom of group stages. So it will be 10 Green Vega Squadron to join the major qualifier teams. Vega Squadron now making back-to-back -back major qualifiers. They made it earlier this year at the Atlanta Major doing very well, going 2-3 and three, and just shy, one game shy of going on to the major itself. They beat Team NIP in a stunner there and then lost to Envious for the deciding match. So Vega Squadron, now back-to-back -back major qualifiers. More importantly for all you North American fans out there, our North American qualifier did finish up this past weekend as well. We had two Brazilian teams alongside two North American teams make the playoffs to fight for our last two final spots, and it was the two best teams by far and away, Cloud9 and Immortals, who are playing their final matches tonight. Uh, this video is going to be up tomorrow morning, but it will be Cloud9 and Immortals who have actually solidified their spots in the major qualifier. Cloud9 ending that bad luck streak. They'll make your major qualifier, and hopefully your major is well, that's where the real streak is going to be contested, but it was Luminosity Gaming and CLG who fell short to these teams. Both 2-0 sweeps, though, by Immortals and Cloud9. So your two best North American teams have gone through, and those are your PGL major qualifier teams, all solidified besides our last three European teams who will join them next week. And that was in some crazy news this past week and a lot of great games going on. So that's going to do it for today's episode of CSK News. Hope you guys all enjoyed. Please leave a comment down below so I can interact and talk back with all of you. I'm going to leave you guys all with one last clip, though, from PGL this past week on the minor. They always use these clips and older songs on the internet and then they actually have the overlay over that so in between games they actually played just random songs offline and here's one of the songs they actually played this last weekend and dropped the n-word albeit it was like the lesser form of the n-word not the er at the end but the as at the end it shouldn't it's not going to result in anything bad so uh but i just wanted to show you guys a funny clip of what uh pgl let slip through on their live stream this past weekend you have another song called real niggas why do you guys call yourself this word that has oh, been... We, so have, we, didn't, we didn't give ourselves this name now. But <laughs> right now in society, you guys are calling yourself... So yes, that happened on PGL's stream. More importantly though, hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode of CSK News. If you guys did, please feel free to subscribe or comment down below. I will see you guys all back here tomorrow. As always, live, love, laugh a lot. Remember, I like you. I will see you all tomorrow. Goodbye. They gotta move quick right now. They're going for it. The defuse is already happening. Hey, are you kidding me? He's gonna go for it. They win the